bosses, welcome back to the hottest show, The Truck Boss Show. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe to our channel and hit that bell notification so you're up to date with all the latest trucker news. Today we've got a great and informative show. Here's what we have on tap. We are bringing you all the features on Freightliner's newest rig, the new Cascadia, and it's almost time for the weather to get blistering cold. Is your rig winterized? If not, we're going to show you what you need to do. Take it away, Jason. Freightliner, a common rig you see on the road, has recently updated their most popular model. And boy, is it a beauty. Check out Brittany's review on the new Cascadia. How's it going, bosses? Brittany here with the Truck Boss Show. This week, we continue our truck reviews, and this time, we're taking a look at Freightliner's new Cascadia. This ever-so-popular rig will have you in awe. So let's take a look at what this Iron Giant has to offer. We all know Freightliner is the market leader in the United States when it comes to all Class 8 trucks, totaling 37.4% of market share in 2020. Known for safety, affordability, and reliability, Daimler knew just what to do to upgrade the Cascadia to be every trucker's dream. The new Cascadia comes in three models, day cab, sleeper cab, and raised roof sleeper cab, and like most other next-gen trucks, it's all about fuel efficiency. To lower the cost per mile, engineers focused on two major things, aerodynamics and powertrain improvements. Using scientific precision, engineers used computational fluid dynamics and Daimler Trucks North America's proprietary wind tunnel to test, modify, and optimize the new Cascadia's aerodynamics. The vehicle's new two-piece front bumper can be easily removed and is mounted behind the hood, minimizing damage and frontal impact. The hood has a three-piece reconfiguration, allowing individual panel replacement if the hood becomes damaged, making replacement quick and easy. Other features include a more sloped hood, an aerodynamic four-bar grille, new aerodynamic mirrors, 12-inch side extenders, and a third door seal that keeps air from flowing through the door jamb. Let's take a look under the hood. There are two engines being offered. The downspeed 400 horsepower DD13 engine features the longest service intervals in its class. The DD15 engine delivers a 1750 pound rating and both offer integrative powertrain that operates as a single unit to deliver greater horsepower and torque at lower RPMs. The new Cascadia has been designed so that drivers can check all of their fuel levels safely from standing on the ground. That's right, no need to climb up on the engine to make sure everything is all right. Underneath, the new Cascadia Engineering offers a new front suspension that features longer monoleaf springs to create a smoother, luxurious ride and improved roll stiffness, meaning less roll and sway, decreased bumper steer, and reduced course corrections. Freightliner was certainly thinking about a trucker's downtime on the road when they redesigned the Cascadia's cab. This 18-wheel corner office is stunning. The sleeper area has been redesigned to include larger passenger and driver side storage cabinets. The driver's lounge features a larger microwave cabinet, an optional larger refrigerator with matching cabinetry, a sturdy television swivel bracket that can hold up to a 26 inch flat panel TV for movie theater like viewing. The driver loft features a two seat dinette workstation and opposing seating with seatbelts that can be folded flat to allow a full Murphy-style bed to swing down in less than 30 seconds. Standard comes with aircraft-inspired ambient lighting and a dimmer switch so drivers can personalize their light levels. Freightliner's commitment to safety is a priority and they've designed it to be one of the safest rigs on the road. The new Cascadia is equipped with a suite of safety systems that help protect drivers and avoid accidents that include active brake assist, adaptive cruise control, and optional lane assist, making this tractor's on-road control and protection second to none. Wow, I don't know about you, but after seeing that, Freightliner might have jumped to my number one spot for trucks I would like to own. They really have outdone themselves on this one. Chris, what do you have on your end? Thanks, Nikki. 
As we begin to creep into the colder months of the year, it's important to make sure your truck is properly prepared for the winter. I got to sit down with Robert Braswell over at the Technology and Maintenance Council about how to winterize your rig. So what are some of those main problems that you run into as you kind of start to creep into the winter? Well, sure. I think preparation is the key. You know, you have to prepare for the winter just like you prepare for operations in the summer. It's kind of like uh, training for a marathon. If you don't do the training, you're not going to be able to finish the race. So just in general, uh, before the winter gets cold, there's some things that you should do to get, help winterize your rig for the winter. Uh, you know, first of all, I would make sure that your windshield washer uh, is working properly and you have winter fluid in the reservoir. You want to make sure that it's sufficient to uh, protect down to 20 below Fahrenheit. Otherwise, you're going to run into problems when you need to be able to have uh, visibility in the winter. You know, in addition, you need to do things like, you know, remove excessive grease from your fifth wheel. Uh, make sure you lube it and lube it with a light product for the winter so it's, uh, it's ready. You also, if it's already snowing, uh, you know, you want to make sure you remove snow from the fifth field before you're trying to couple. So, you know, keep that in mind. And really, before winter starts, you should pack a winter survival kit. Make sure you have some high calorie snacks in there, have some warm clothes, have some proper winter footwear. Pack a snow shovel in your truck if you're operating the snow belt. It might save you a tow belt. If you have accessories on your rig, like a lift gate or other devices that are hydraulic in nature, make sure you get the correct viscosity fluid in them so they function properly in the cold temperatures. For example, your PTO, hydraulic pumps, your motors, all of that. You also want to make sure you uh, check your battery and your connections on your trailer lift gates if you're so equipped because batteries don't charge well in the cold as we all know. And if you've got an auxiliary engine, make sure they're ready for winter too. That includes your reefer unit. If you use traction devices, you want to make sure they're in serviceable condition. So those are just some general tips on how to prepare for the winter. Okay. Yeah. Maybe you could expand a little bit on some of the, on, on tires specifically, you know, what is some maintenance that they can do uh, that'll help keep them safe on the road? Sure. Well, first of all, just in any kind of weather, you want to make sure you have the proper inflation pressure for the load being carried. So you always want to make sure that you check the pressure in your tires when the tire is cold. If you've got an ATIS system, automatic tire inflation system, or a tire pressure monitoring system, great, that's going to help you do that. But just do note that pressures drop about a pound of pressure for every 10 degree drop in temperature. So when the weather gets colder, you want to make sure that you're staying at your target pressure for the load being carried. In addition, you know, you should also inspect all your tires for excessive wear. There may be irregular wear issues. There might be cuts. You might have tread depth issues. You're going to make sure that all your tires have sufficient tread for safe winter driving. And please drain that fuel water separator at least weekly because that's going to save you a lot of trouble in the long run. Check for water in your fuel tanks. And if you have to, remove that water either mechanically or physically. Because remember, when we went to ultra low sulfur diesel several years ago, uh, that fuel is more what they call uh, hydrophilic. It likes water. And that's not necessarily good for winter operations. And if they want to find out more about it, they can always visit our website, uh, tmc.trucking.org. Uh, it is a, a place you can get all sorts of tips uh, along with 4,000 pages of the best information on how to spec and maintain your vehicle. There's a lot of good stuff to unpack there, so drivers, make sure you take all the necessary steps to keep yourself safe this winter because we can't do it without you. Nope, that's right, Chris, and make sure to stay tuned over the next couple of months because we're going to be bringing you more information on how to be completely prepared when it comes to your rig. Yep. That's right. And then next show, we are going to be bringing you a part one on a story uh, on a company called Fleeting and how Kyrie Irving made a huge donation. That's cool. I never knew that NBA players were involved in the trucking industry. Oh, yes. That's Big cool. advocates. Yeah. And I also got to go down to Quana, Texas. It's a cozy little Texas town that has an awesome truck and car show, and they have a great trucking history. So I'm going to bring you guys all the highlights from that next week. Awesome. I can't wait to see that, Chris. And make sure you are always like, share, and subscribing because we can't do this without your support. That's right. And why do we do this, Nikki? Because you're the boss. <laughs>